Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are listening to Headlines You May Have Missed for Thursday, January 25th, 25th 2018. That's a, that's a month after Christmas, and it seems like ages ago since it was Christmas. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, and action. And today's show title is Fear is the Crypto Killer. And you can get show notes at his isheadlines.com. On this show, we'll be covering EU cryptophobia, China's quantum lead, lobster rights, Turkey's social media terrorist, and more. On this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. And now, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Let's start that clock and let's 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 get this thing done. EU VP warns that cryptocurrency anonymity must be stopped. Citing fears that cryptocurrencies could allow people to do things illegally, the EU Commission VP is calling on the governing body to crack down hard on cryptocurrencies, and especially to hone in on ways to prevent cryptocurrencies from allowing anonymous transactions. And if you follow iState.tv, that is a theme that we drive home again and again and again. One of the key fears that coercive enterprises have is that individuals will be able to do things anonymously. Whenever authoritarians like this VP of, of the EU use phrases like, quote, unlawful, unquote, you can go ahead and substitute the phrase with action that the state cannot monitor or control. Remember that the EU lives and dies on its power to track exchange of value between entities so that it can pose it, impose its fee or tax uh, fee. Uh, yeah, we'll just call it a tax. Uh, it knows we'll get paid because of the implied and sometimes direct threat of violence against the entity that dares not cough up the fee for having the privilege of exchanging value with another entity. So this is coming from Express.co, speaking at the Economic and Financial Affairs Council press conference. Mr. Dombrovsky, that's the, that's the tool in question, said, I made some suggestions on how the EU should approach cryptocurrencies. Europe to embrace opportunities of blockchain. He said he wants the European Union to embrace opportunities of blockchain. But they must be vigilant to prevent cryptocurrencies from becoming a method of unlawful behavior. And he outlined his plans to regulate cryptocurrencies. He said the European supervisory authorities must update warnings on the financial stability, blah, blah, blah. Uh, really. Translated, dude, they might be able to do stuff and we might not know that they're doing it. So we won't be able to get our pound of flesh. We must stop it. We're going to the next headline. China takes lead in building quantum internet. Now, now I understand that, that this is uh, if you're if you go to iState.tv, you know that I have an I build category. It's one of our top categories that I look for every day. And uh, the I build category is a category that I reserve for examples of people building tools to create liberty. So why the heck did I put this story about China building? Uh, well, they're, they, they have a satellite up in space that they're testing and they're determining, yes, this satellite can indeed send signals through the quantum internet. Why the heck would I put that in this category? Well, the reason is simple. I believe that uh, while the state, China in this case, is, is the one that's using this quantum internet technology that it's not going to be limited to the purview of the state that this that this technology is a technology that non-state free associations will be able to use to build their own uh, quote hack proof unquote internet to send messages that might need to be protected from coercive associations 
eyes and ears. And so what, what we're talking about here is China launched a satellite called the, the Mikius or Mesius satellite uh, on orbit, uh, in orbit on August 2016. And now they've done some testing on it in a paper titled Satellite Relayed Intercontinental Quantum Network. They're claiming that, yes, they, they have determined that this is capable of sending signals through a quantum computing powered network. Do animals have rights? Well, I tell you what, in Switzerland, lobsters now do. That's right. Lobsters have rights in Switzerland. The Swiss extend rights to lobsters and probe the overall question, how should our emerging understanding of animal cognition affect the way we treat animals? And do animals have rights as a result of that cognition? So this is from QZ.com. The new science of animal cognition is forcing countries to overhaul their laws. Swiss lawmakers taking a cue from William Speaks. It doesn't matter where they're taking their cue from. Uh, they have considered the lobster and its ability to feel pain. And so, as of March 1st, it will be illegal to boil lobsters alive. Live crustaceans, including the lobster, may no longer be transported on ice or in ice water. Aquatic species must always be kept in their natural environment. Crustaceans must now be stunned before they are killed, the new law provides. And the change is part of a broader set of Swiss rules grappling with the reality of animal consciousness. And it's very interesting because we are discovering that animals may have more cognition, more awareness than we thought they would. And I, I, I feel like this is a, a top contender to be a topic that we're going to talk about on Is Daily Tuesday with uh, Bodhi Agora in the I Ponder segment. What does it mean as we discover that animals might have more cognition than we thought they did? Turkey arrests 150 people for pro afrin social media posts. And uh, by the way, if you go to iState.tv, you're going to find that I am regularly trying to track what's going on with Rahava. And Afrin is an enclave. It's a part of Rahava, even though it's kind of separated from Rahava, but it's still still an enclave. And if you don't know what, what the deal is with Rahava, I strongly encourage you to, to, do the, to do the research and find out a little bit more because Rahava is an experiment in, I'm not going to say it's quite statelessness, but it's approaching statelessness. Uh, it's quite a fascinating experiment that's going on there. As Turkey continues its assault on Afrim, it also continues its assault on free speech at home, monitoring its citizens' social media accounts and arresting anyone who voices any support for Afrin or any doubt of Turkey's operations. So what Turkey is doing is it's accusing these folks of spreading, wait for it, wait for it, see if this sounds familiar, terroristic propaganda. Also saying fake news, that's another part of this. Uh, the same charges that Germany uses against any of its citizens that calls into question Merkel's immigration policies, policies and the same charges that many in the US want to use against their political opponents in their bid to crack down on social media. Are you sensing a trend here? You think that these countries are so different from one another? Uh, and this is from Reuters. Turkey has detained a total of 150 people for spreading terrorist, terrorist propaganda on social media about its military campaign against the Kurdish militia in Syria since the operation began at the weekend, state media said on Wednesday. Notice the, the phraseology from Reuters. You think they're on the side of the Kurds? Probably not. Politicians, journalists, and activists are among those who have been arrested over their social media posts, according to the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, the second largest opposition party in parliament. Police have staged operations in 31 provinces, with 11 suspects remain while well, with 11 suspects remanded in custody pending trial in seven people. You know that's going to be a fair trial in Turkey. You know it. Totally know it. Uh, State-run Anadolu, Anadolu news agency said, citing police officials questioning of the other 132 is still continuing. And there you go. So that's that's what's going on in Turkey. And uh, you may see that coming to the U.S. soon. Yeah. 
California loses another gun manufacturer in wake of anti-gun laws. I know, a moment of silence, a pause, a surprise, a shock face. Do you have a shock face? This show is all audio. There's no video of me, so you can't see my face. But if you could see my face, you would see the shock face, the shock at all face. <gasps> really? Uh, no, it's not shocked. It's not awed. It's totally predictable. California has been singing... Take your jobs and shove them. They ain't working in Proctopia no more. I just made that up. Well, I didn't make it up on the fly. I actually wrote it, but still, I made it up today. Today I wrote it, so I made it up. And I guess you could say as I was writing it, I, I was making it up on the fly. So they've been singing that tune for quite some time. They've been singing that song in a variety of ways, mostly through extra burdensome regulations and draconian anti-prosperity taxes. Uh, one other way that they've been singing that song is in their anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-gun laws, which are chasing away the gun manufacturers, and with, with good reason. Uh, joining the ranks of the ex-California gun manufacturers is Weatherby Inc., which is packing up its gear and heading east to Wyoming. That is to Wyoming, I believe. That's where the uh, the head fiend, Michael Dean, resides. Ten minutes. So uh, heading, on o heading on over to Fiendtopia, I guess you can say. Leaving Progtopia and heading, maybe, well, I don't know, how, no, not many people would get that joke. That would be an inside joke, so I couldn't use it. But for those of you that know, leaving Progtopia and heading to Fiendtopia, that, that could have been the headline. California, this is from KTVG.com, California-based firearms manufacturer, will, will re relocate to Sheridan, Wyoming as part of a multi-million dollar publicly financed what publicly financed package to bring 70 to 90 jobs and a new industrial building to town governor matt mead announced tuesday okay so that publicly financed part i'm not for that i guess anybody who watches me in any way shape or form would probably figure that out weatherby inc is a family-owned company that has operated out of paso roble california since its founding in 1945 so basically weatherby inc they like socialism but then not, not that much. So they'll take Wyoming socialism. That's better than California socialism. Good job. Good job, Weatherby. Way to take those socialist dollars. I love it. AT&T wants net neutrality for big social. So once again, the we're being regulated, so they should be regulated too argument is being used. And this time it's by AT&T. They're concerned. You see, they're concerned about the potential for Congress to reenact net neutrality regulations. Now, their concern is not that, well, that, that Congress believes that it actually has some sort of magic bunny authority to do the things that it does. And, and it does have magic bunny authority, magic bunny authority that you, the people, grant it. So stop it, by the way. Just stop it. Uh, rather than focusing on ending regulations for everyone, however, AT&T, they are appearing to do what so many other companies do. Whenever they see something happening that uh, new technology, a new company, whatever, emerges that doesn't quite fit into the regulatory stranglehold, their answer is not, hey, free us so we can compete fairly. No, their answer is, hey, if we're going to be in locked in chains, they should be locked in chains too. This is, I, I used this metaphor before and I'll use it again. This would be like, uh, you know, if the Union soldiers had arrived uh, uh, at the plantation and they found the, the slaves inside and the slave response was, Hey, man, we're in chains and we're slay enslaved. And the uh, Union soldiers said, okay, we're going to free. No, 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 no. We don't want to be freed. We want everybody to be put in chains. See, that's pretty much what AT&T is doing and what so many other companies have done in the past. So what AT&T is saying, if you want to regulate us, you should also regulate the social media giants. Big social. And maybe, just maybe, the conservative darling of the FCC Ajit Pai, the chairman, might accommodate them because, you see, conservatives, they don't like big social. 
And, and I understand why, because big social is mostly owned and operated by neoliberals who don't like conservatives. And there are many stories on iState.tv, well, many, a, a few stories on iState.tv that touch on the conservative response to big social is not, hey, you know, free market, we believe in the free market. Hey, let's uh, let's produce a free market response to big social. No, their response, although some conservatives are saying that, but many others, and I would say the majority are saying, hey, we need to use regulations so that we can somehow stop the neoliberals from having this, quote, unfair advantage in the social media marketplace. WTO attempts to play down trade war fears at Davos. So, folks, when the head of the World Trade Organization feels the need to quell fears of an impending trade war triggered by the U.S. enactment of tariffs and threats of more tariffs to come, you can count on one thing. There's going to be a trade war. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and say there's going to be a trade war. And it's not included in in the in the excerpt that I, uh, I I took from the article that I'm referring to, which is from theguardian.com. Uh, but you can you can go to the article and you'll see uh, in the article it also talks about uh, one of the one of the reasons that the person felt compelled to say something is because uh, Angela Merkel is telling the U.S. to tell you know she's directing it at Trump you know you better watch yourself with them rig you know them tariff thingies and you better Five watch because we could respond because uh, the Trump administration is apparently sending messages to Europe. Uh, about uh, their aluminum, their aluminium, and what that that there are more regulation, there are more tariffs that could be coming. So the 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 the, the tariff war could be more than just between the U.S. and China. Right now, China is the target, but it, it could go beyond that. So the, the from the Guardian, the head of the World Trade Organization played down talks of a global trade war after the U.S. said it was planning to take fresh action against Chinese imports. Speaking to the Guardian, Roberto Azvedo said countries were becoming more aware of the risk of a go-it-alone approach that would harm their poorest citizens the most. That means that that everybody's recognizing that hey man, we got to get on board with the global uh, uh, global regulations. That's the good thing. That's great. You know. Uh, we haven't been able to figure out how to manage our own economy, so let's form some sort of global organization that tries to manage the economy of the world. That makes sense. That makes that makes absolute sense. Twitter COO quits and leaves investors uncertain about the future. So the departure of Twitter CEO could indicate a radical shakeup of how things are done at Twitter. It also indicates that Twitter's woes have only just begun and that investors are feeling less confident about Twitter's future. And this is from uh, Benzinga.com. And so the COO in question is Anthony Noto, and he has quit. And so from Benzinga.com, uh, the thesis, Noto played a critical role in overseeing Twitter's strategy and managing the company's operations. Hargreaves said in a brief note, since Dorsey split, splits the time between Twitter and Square Inc. and SQ, Noto's departure now creates a significant operational challenge and could serve as a signal that Twitter's ongoing turnaround will be more difficult to execute than investors had hoped. So I'll leave this uh, this last uh, headline here uh, of the main headlines. 50 Cent became Bitcoin millionaire thanks to album Animal Ambition. So 50 Cent or 50 Cent if you're down with the hips. And is, is, that, is that what the crazy kids are saying these days? Uh, has found himself, probably not, in the enviable position of being worth a whole ton of millions more dollars because he casually said he'd accept Bitcoin as payment for his album Animal Ambition back in 2014. Turns out a lot of people paid him in Bitcoins in 2014, and now his Bitcoins have become millions of dollars. Dollars. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Ooh, just real quick here. I guess I can get this in. Swiss bank wants Bitcoin dead, and it wants regs to do it. Using the, again, the we're regulated, so they should be regulated to argument. And I just went through all that in an earlier story just in this show. A Swiss bank Two leader, minutes. Joseph Stiglitz, is calling on Bitcoin to be regulated out of existence because it has an, quote, unfair, unquote, advantage over gov currencies. That's right, because Bitcoin isn't bogged down by regulations like gov currencies are. Bitcoin should be regulated out of existence. And 
I will leave you to ponder the idiocy and sycophancy of that statement. But remember, Stiglitz is not just a client of government. He's also an owner. So he's speaking from a place of personal interest. Wow, we got through all the top headlines there. That's 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 awesome. So let's uh, I'm just going to read more headlines here. U.S. Japan multinational core gets best corps get best deals at World Bank. Yay! Davos talks swirl around more social media regs. Yay! Washington gun bill pushes for people to voluntarily surrender gun One rights. Minute. Nothing bad could happen with that. Civilian death toll mounts as Turks continue Afrin assault. And I believe that the death toll they're, they're counting is, I, I believe it's 30 so far. Hamas turning to weaponized drones. And that's the, 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 the these, these para, paragov or non-gov entities that are turning to uh, weaponized drones. It, it's quite fascinating. It's, it's, it's a story 30 that seconds. to follow. AFD becomes major opposition party in Merkel government, and Merkel don't like it because that they're definitely opposed to her in a big way. Uh, AFD, they're kind of uh, anti-immigration and oppose Merkel's pro-immigration policies. Greek PM calls Turkey an aggressive neighbor at Davos. Ten that seconds. A, that's really telling that they said that. YouTube funding pro-YouTube artists. That's a surprise. A taste of the emergency rally of 3D printing. And there you go. That's it. That's it. We have run out of time. We have done our 20 minutes of headlines. We can do no more. We can do go no further. That is all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for January 25th. 2018. And as always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow travelers.